Hello everybody, it is Brooke with The Junk Parlor. I've got some good static going on this morning. And we are here at the Iowa State Fairground Flea Market. So let's see what we can find. This is always a great booth. I love these big blanket pins with the numbers on them. They could be laundry pins. Here we have some big keys. Thought those were pretty cool. Lots of little bits. But for the most part, this booth prices their things similar to myself. And I'm not really sure what that is. But that is a needle holder. You know I love green, so when I saw this little picture, I had to look. Oh, it's $29. That's more than I anticipated. There were a lots of miniature pictures throughout the whole flea market. Check out this beer light. This would be awesome hanging in your man cave. I like how all these old insulators look strung on this wire. You could drape it like garland and then, oh, this booth, <laughs> that picture, these like silicone breasts. You never know what you'll find at the flea market. I was really hoping this picnic basket was going to be a good deal. Even though it's not green, I fell in love. And what do we have here? This pottery piece is so unique and look at how much they're selling for online. $400? People yeah. get $400. Those then. are crazy good. If it was a color I like. Yeah. That's yep, they're, they're, they're definitely they, they're, me. They're from the Viking mold. Great price. Very cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we were surprised to see people are selling our prints. I see this guy all of the places. I mean, he's at Watch Here Flea Market. He's at Brass Armadillo, and he always has cool, unique things, and it's always fun to Your lamp is awesome. Check out how tall this thing is, and it has a beautiful green glass piece at the top. I love her style. She specializes in stones, but my favorites were these glass mushrooms she had. She also had some disco ball ones. And Amber was here with her five-week-old baby who was totally grinning while she was sleeping. I do have a little buyer's remorse on this piece. It was out of some basement that got tore down and some town <laughs> now i can't even remember but i doubt it even works but it's beautiful look at it thanks so much for going to the flea market with me let's see what i found okay so i'm showing you what i found much 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 later than the actual flea market the first piece i want to show you is this two drawer card catalog by weiss that I found the moment I walked in to the building that the flea market was in. She hadn't even priced it, and so as soon as I asked her the price, we set it aside and it sat there until I was done shopping for the day. And I failed to mention with this, do you see anything wrong right there? The little pull tabs have been installed upside down. So I didn't even notice that when I first bought it, but this, should really be down here. And the only way I know that is because your label would slide out if it's not super snug in there, if you left them how they are. So I just left them, but you can definitely flip them over on your own if you want to. I also found these three little canisters, I think is what they are. The shape of them is just so incredibly awesome. I love it. And it was kind of a bonus because it matched the little jar that I got last week. So this is the little jar that I had in my video last week that I said the lady at the checkout counter, or she was also checking out, was like talking to me about how her grandma had one and giving me the whole story. And it does have a W on the bottom. And one of you commented that that is probably Westmoreland. Is that what it was? I even Googled it and looked it up, but I think you are correct. So this little guy 
happens to match the set that I got at the flea market perfectly. And somebody wanted this one. And so I said, hey, I have three more and you know, here's the price for them. At the next booth I went to, this couple always has amazing things, like amazing things. A lot of times they're more at the price point that I sell things at. So, you know, I don't necessarily buy a lot, but I always enjoy looking at what they have. You know this caught my eye because it is green. It is a great pepper shaker. And this is like Illinois company. Um, Owens, Illinois company, and it is $35. So if you're new to my videos, I try and share the prices with you so you can shop. So this is like basically me trying to sell you, sell you the things that I just bought. So $35 on our Owens, Illinois pepper shaker plus shipping. So if you want this or anything that you see in any of my videos, you can comment below or I feel like most people choose to, to go ahead and message me on Facebook or Instagram, wherever maybe they originally started following me. And you can also reach out via email as well, because if you are a new to me customer, I'm gonna need your email address, I'm gonna need your mailing address so I can invoice you and ship you the item. So you're gonna have to email me at, um, at some point if you don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram. I have a thing for hand mirrors and look at the good texture on this one. So it looks like it was black at one point and now it is not black because of wear and tear, but it is a nice beveled glass for $25 and it's just such a unique shape. I just love it. And you know, I might've actually got this at the same booth as the card catalog. Everybody had their Easter stuff out and so where I found this booth, they had tons of Easter eggs and now I can't even think what they were. They weren't like marble or onyx or, you know, a stone. And they weren't real eggs. I don't even remember what kind of eggs they had in here. Maybe I caught it on video. But look at the holder. Now, I don't know if this is French or, you know, what kind it is, how old it is, but look... I mean, it's got some great, great old, there's some, some rust even, but it holds 12. So it's an old egg carrying basket or not a basket, an individual carrier, and it is $45. So you could hang this with an S hook off of like a bird cage holder or set it on the counter or, um, you know, maybe even hang it off of a peg rack or something. I love it. Then... I want to know what would you have done in this situation? So I was in a booth and I absolutely fell in love with this vase, but I was him hawing around about whether I wanted to get it or not. So I set it down and I walked away. And then what happened? A guy goes and picks it up and looks at it and sets it down. And during this time, I had already pulled my money out because she does not mark anything. I knew how much it was. And there's a good crack right there, I think, that I didn't see. He picks it up and is looking at it. So I'm standing there with money in my hand, trying not to be like, please don't get it, please don't get it. <laughs> he sets it down on the table and he picks up something else. So I grab it and then he's like, oh, well, I wanted that. And I'm like, well, I wanted it too. And you set it down and I already have my money out. And he was like, oh, okay. But part of me felt bad because I just feel bad for those things. So then I felt like, ah, awkward situation. I don't know. I'm probably making more out of it than it really is. But I know, and I'm sure you know, that if you want something at a busy flea market, people are shoulder to shoulder, you don't set it down if you want it. So let me know what you would have done in that situation. Inside that vase is this whole story about this pot was fired in a Sager, a small brick box filled with sawdust, charcoal, fruit rinds, bark, and other combustibles. When the temperature reaches 1700 Fahrenheit, a few cups of salt mixed with copper carbonate are thrown into the kiln. The combination of salt vapors and the fumes from the combustibles form 
Vivid surface colors and patterns. These pots are primarily decorative and because of their low firing temperature, may be slightly porous. You use as a vase, a smaller non-porous pot should be placed inside. It is signed and then because I did not see that crack, I just wanna see if there's actually a crack on the inside. So it is scratched there, I would say, and I might actually hit it with an eraser to see if that is a crack or a pin mark, but it does not go through to the inside. You can see that. And then I did not get very much there, but the last thing that I got is totally not a Brooke piece because I don't do clothes, purses, accessories, jewelry. That's just not my thing. But when I saw this little purse clutch, I fell in love. I need to clean off the old sticker right there, but it is um, a 60s tapestry, or I also saw people calling it a uh, carpet bag. It is $48 and let's see if I can figure out how to open it here. It has a nice, I would call that a brown, maybe purplish brown. There is a name right there. Very, 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 it's either an R or a P to start and then Y ends it, but that is all I can make out. And then the lining of the little coin purse is black but it is in great condition and it's so cute. And even if it doesn't sell, I mean, these are my colors. So I could just hang it. Like if I'm staging my entryway, just hang it um, in the entryway because it's so cute. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember that I do put out videos every Tuesday and Thursday to the best of my ability. I would love to see you back here next week.